Now, I kid you not, I came out here a minute ago saying, oh, I feel well enough to do a quick video. Went inside, fed my child, came back out, and like, you can't make this stuff up. Like in the time that I went inside and, and fed the little one and came out, there's a, a little walk behind bulldozers been delivered, like, what have I done to deserve this? <laughs> if you're new to the channel, welcome. One of the inside jokes we have here, which is real, is that this is the noisiest subdivision on the planet. I can't make a video without a damn bulldozer showing up. Like, it's just, it's just karma or something. I don't know what I've done. You can tell I'm a little sick. Yeah, okay. Yeah, all right, we'll just do that. Ooh, it's called a dingo, I can see. Anyway, we'll be back in a minute after the vroom vroom. Is he gone? I think he's back there, so it'll be all right. Okay, so welcome to today's video. I haven't done one in a few days because I have an eight-year-old who just went back to school in person for the first time in a year and a half, and uh, she came home with the plague. Not the Rona one. We all tested negative, just the flu, and gave it to me, and... So I've been a little down, but I'm springing back. I'm working hard. Today's Thursday. This will go up today, carry the one. Tomorrow's Friday. So uh, the live stream tomorrow night at eight o'clock, uh, it's gonna happen. I mean, I'm, I'm just gonna push through. My my father didn't raise no dummy. We make, we make uh, promises, we keep them. So 8 p.m. tomorrow night, Friday, we will be live. Hopefully I will be in better condition by then. We'll see, and if not, alcohol kills germs. It's science. Anyway, so today we're kicking off the Heritage Redo. That's the Heritage, if you didn't know. So, um, my 2014 Heritage, we bought new for my dad. And he rode it uh, for a few years until his legs just kind of stopped working. Not completely, but to the point to where you'd pull up to a stop sign and then maybe not so much stay upright. So, he got a trike. And this has been sitting in the garage ever since. But those years leading up to that, he and I put many, many hours into that bike. So it doesn't look like it. It's just a heritage, right? But every little screw and bolt has been touched. Lots of little dress up items. Converted the, the saddlebags to quick release, which is a pain in the ass on an old heritage. You've never done that before. You're actually cutting the back of the bag and the whole deal. Converted that to quick release. Uh, just a million little things. Look at that, you like that squeak? Yes, a little one. Anyway, the million little things. But it's been sitting there. And on the way home from Sturgis, I was thinking to myself, let's put the chopper off, spend about the same amount of money, and let's make a Bicla out of the 2014 Heritage, and that'll be more rideable and useful. And then we'll get to the, to the chopper because there might be a little switching and trading going on there in the near future. But so what we have so far is we're gonna do two versions of this build on the Bicla. You guys may have heard of Cholo bike. It's, it's so, so, a little bit of history. Cholo is a generic Spanish word on the West Coast that means gangster. So you can have a dude who looks like a Cholo, you can have a Cholo bike, you can have like low rider cars, it's all the same kind of culture. Um, the bike's actually called a Bicla, uh, which is V-I-C-L-A, which is sort of a slang chop version of Bicicleta, which is Spanish for bicycle. There you go. So. We're building a Bicla. I have 19 inch bar. You know, I'll just show you what I got. Hang on a moment. So first off, we got these. Woo! These are LA choppers. Uh, they're called tree huggers because they don't use a riser. How cool is that? You actually bolt them into the bottom from the top of the tree right into the bar. There will be no visor, riser clamp. They are adjustable though. You can move them back and forth a little bit. Uh, they're inch and a half, nice big fat bars. Uh, I like them a lot. I'm looking forward to these a lot. So these are 19s, but they don't use a riser. So it's gonna be more like, it'll feel more like a 16, something like that. Um, I wanted to go higher, but the wife talked me out of it. Just saying like, well, but what if I wanna ride it? <laughs> She's gonna stab me for saying that. But anyway, so these are 19s that'll feel more like a 17, 16, cause there's no rise at all. They go straight to the tree. Anyway, so that's the bars and then let me move the camera to show you the other thing we got. So, 
I may have mentioned earlier, we're gonna do two versions of this bike. We're gonna do a version 1.0 and a 2.0. And 1.0 is gonna be uh, a noisy walk behind bulldozer, proper bars, looking into exhaust, hoping to work something out with an exhaust manufacturer pretty soon. Uh, so we can put some nice long fishtails on it, like it should have if you're building a Bikla. And this right here. So this is a nice, theoretically, uh, stock swap, like it's gonna be nothing to it. Just don't stab the golf cart seat. Or do, take out your aggression. Come on. Don't you just love these times when I should edit, but I don't? Welcome to the Pro Monkey channel. I don't edit. So anyway, this is a 21 inch skinny wheel and tire. Look at that flat, there you go. Ah, wow. We're seeing this together for the first time. Uh, uh, fat spoke, 21 inch skinny. That'll go on there just as soon as I have the proper um, spacers for the uh, front fender. I don't have them yet. And where's the rotors? I thought I was supposed to come with rotors. Wait a minute now. Okay, so there's the side the rotors mount, the rotor mounts to. But I could swear it's supposed to come with a rotor. Oh my lord, let me look into that. Because I could swear it was supposed to come with a brake rotor, and I don't want to use a stalker. Do I have to buy something else? Man, I hate it when that shit happens. Anyway, so you got a white wall, chrome fat spokes. There's your front wheel that's going to go on the Heritage. Again, as soon as I had the spacer, that'll jack up the front fender enough to get that on there. Let me go verify something, then I'll finish this video out. But I'm almost positive I was supposed to get a brake rotor. So, yeah, I just verified that I was supposed to get a brake rotor and bolts. I bought it. Um, a shop's called Mototex. Uh, they're out of California and they don't have their own website, so you buy it through Amazon, but it's not like an Amazon warehouse. You buy it through Amazon, Mototex then builds the wheel and tire to order and they ship it out. That was actually pretty, not bad. I mean, like, uh, they sent it FedEx, it was here in a few days, it takes them a few days to build it. So that I'm pleased with. They just simply forgot to put the rotor and the bolts in there, but it says plain as day in the listing that I'm supposed to get the rotor and bolt. So I'm sure they'll send it. I'll keep you updated on that, but there you go. So this all in was about 900. Again, that's supposed to include, include the rotor and bolts and they're not in there, but I'm sure, I'm sure they'll work it out. But it's a fat spoke. I mean, it's a cheap tire. It's one of them Shinco's, but supposedly those aren't that bad. But anyway, there's a tire wheel, custom made spoke for me. Good to go. So that'll go on there. On the first, I think it is, something like that. The uh, adapters I need to raise the fender will be here. So we'll throw the tire and wheel on. Uh, the bars, I bought the LA Choppers kit uh, wiring extensions. So I've done apes a bunch of times over the years, all on soft tails. I've never done it on a, on a bagger, a uh, dresser. Um, just because it's such a pain in the ass and I've always worked it into the deal when I bought the bikes. So the two dressers I've had that have had apes on it, three, I've always just worked it into the deal. But I've always done soft tails and dynas and stuff myself. And every time I say I'll never do it again. Why? Because it's just a pain in the ass. This 14 doesn't seem as bad. There's fewer wires. Call me crazy. Seriously, there are fewer wires than there are on like an older bike. When I did it on my 95, I thought, God, kill me. You know what that was like. But this I don't, I don't think will be as bad. Famous last words. But yeah, uh, I don't feel up to tackling that yet. I need to be 100% better before I start messing with that bar, those bars. But... Once the bars are on, we'll throw the wheel on, and then a local shop here called Chopper's Shop, West Palm Beach deal, a uh, place that a, a viewer actually turned me on to. Uh, I'm going to order a chrome front end from him, from a shop he works for in California that'll be stockers that have been chromed, and I'll bring them up there and we'll swap them out. Uh, so there you go. There's version 1.0 is the bars and the wheel and the exhaust. A million interruptions. So that version 1.0 is gonna be the skinny wheel, the bars, chrome front end, and the exhaust when I get that worked out. And then we'll go version 2.0, which is gonna be really cool stuff that takes some time, but it'll involve sparkly paint and stuff like that. So no, I'm not tearing up the bike because I want it to be able to be converted back to normal 
Uh, should I ever want to do that? I won't, but I want to be able to do that. So we've got some fresh body stuff coming, but that'll, that'll take a long time to get done. So anyway, I'm back from the dead. I'm trying to get back at it. <laughs> Comment down below. Oh, a, a quick thought. Let me go off on a five minute tangent here. Tearing this guy down. So of course there's the bolt in the back, the bolt in the front. Uh, you know, you take apart the gauges and take those off. The, and then of course the, the fuel gauge wire that you always forget and then start to pull the tank off and it's still attached. So your fuel gauge wire and your fuel line, which just pushes up, clicks, and did quick disconnection to the bottom there. And then the crossover, the stupidest design on earth. The, the, the tank has um, nipples that come out of the bottom and there's a crossover line. I said nipples. And you basically unhook that and gasoline goes all over your garage and you potentially die. I have not found a better way to do this and my tank and this guy actually had a stainless steel braided quick connect line and it's still a mess like you're holding the nipple shut while you try and drain into a tank. It's just a freaking mess. So if anyone has thought of a better way to do that, draining the tank from the quick connect, quick connect or just running out of gas, there's that. Let me know because that sucks every time. Got it done this time. Every time I think I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die. So someone down below, how did you do that better with this, this uh, you know, the crossover under the tank? From there, as you can see, this is as far as I've gotten. Tank is off, cables are unhooked. This is the entire right side control. See what I mean? How like this is fewer wires than on an older bike. That won't be as bad. And I ordered those really cool, um, super highly rated connectors that you hit with, with a strong heat gun and melts the solder into the wires and all that stuff. We're gonna try that. They'll be here tomorrow. So maybe this weekend if I feel up to it, I just don't have enough brains from this bug, you know, to do that. But uh, again, tomorrow night, eight o'clock, we're on. We're still gonna do the live stream. It'll be a good time. Come have a drink with us and hang out. Uh, we've got some more stories to tell from Sturgis. Some so good, we really should do separate videos, but the wife's been working like a dog, so I can't really do that. But uh, yeah. That's about it. See y'all out there. Take care of each other. We'll talk real soon. Bye.